guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the first of two videos of the software tour of the Samsung Omnia 2. In this video, we're going to go through the home screen layout, which is similar in concept to the original Omnia, but they take it another step further. So let's start off by turning on the device, and we can do so with the unlock button to the right. Now we get this beautiful unlock screen, and I wish you could be here to see how crisp these oranges are in the background and how great these blacks look. So from this screen, you can see your missed calls and your new messages, although I wish you could see your next appointment. That would be perfect, but you can't get everything. So to unlock the device, you tap and hold this little icon, and you are taken into your first home screen. Now, the new interface on the Omnia 2 operates much like the Android interface on the G1 and the early Android devices, where there are multiple home screens that you can go to and if you look up here we can kind of see that we're on one of three if we swipe to the right it moves to the next one and you can have widgets different widgets on each of the different uh, home screens and for some reason um, there is a lot of G.I. Joe wallpaper built into the Omnia. I think the studio of uh, that, that makes G.I. Joe the movie has paid Samsung for some product placement, which kind of annoys me, uh, to be honest, especially since I can't figure out how to change the wallpaper on screens two and three. I've even consulted the manual, so that's going to take further investigation. But let's go back to the the first home screen where I have changed the wallpaper to something a little bit nicer than the G.I. Joe wallpaper. So before with the Samsung Omnia, you were really limited in the amount of widgets that you could put on your device. But since then, Samsung has opened up development of the widget interface to developers. So there's a whole universe of widgets now. They use these widgets on their smart devices like the Omnia 2, and they also use the widgets on their, not, their, their dumb phones, their feature phones um, that you may have seen uh, selling out there. So let's go through some of these widgets, and I'll show you how the selection of widgets has changed, because now there are a lot of useful widgets. So you know, this one right here is nothing new. It is the media player. So if you have an SD card installed or, you know, since this has eight gigabytes of memory, you may have some music right on your device and you can play it right from your home screen. If we slide this one over, we have the kind of slideshow. So if you have pictures of, you know, your family or friends and you want it to kind of carousel through on your home screen, you can have that happen. And of course, with any widget, you can tap and hold to move it around anywhere on the screen but you can't fit that many widgets on one screen, which is, which is why it's good that there are multiple screens. And we just bring it back to the tray when we're done with it. Sliding this widget to the right, it's kind of a profile switcher, so you can quickly choose if you want to vibrate or volume on or volume off. Going down the list, we have stocks, which is good. This was actually present in a ROM update to the, uh, the original Omnia. If we tap on the widget, we will get an, an expanded screen that shows us um, all of our stocks and we can actually tap on our stocks to get a chart. Kind of like HTC devices or even the iPhone, it shows you a chart, you can tap on five day, it downloads the data, you can see how the stock is trending. And we're going to get out of that. Get out of that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's put that one back. Next up, we have an FM radio widget. So this device does have FM radio. You need to connect to your headset in order to do that and uses 3.5 millimeters, so that's good. Um, we have a great AccuWeather widget, which shows you the current temperature and the conditions in whatever city you're in. Um, and we can tap on the widget to kind of get a more extended forecast. And let me try that again. Here it comes. A really nice display of, of, of the weather conditions and, and the forecast that's coming up see what else we have here. We have this one, which just shows you the name of your provider. Right now I'm on AT&T and I'm getting 3G, as you can see up there. Sometimes I get 3G+, plus, which implies HSDPA. Um, this one here will turn on and off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I wouldn't want to waste the screen real estate by having this widget up there. And then we have the F for Facebook, although it's not actually a Facebook application. It's simply a link to the Facebook website. So if I tap on that, I'm taken to Opera Mobile 9.5. I wish this was an application, but unfortunately it's not. It's actually a pretty cool concept to be able to have these, uh, these shortcuts to websites on your home screen. I haven't found a way to do that yet. For example, I'd like to have a little P for Pocket Now or a W for Wikipedia or any website that I visit on a regular basis. That would be super cool. Um, we have MySpace and YouTube, and those two are the same as the Facebook um, widget. They just link to the website, which is kind of, kind of blah. So here we have CNN Mobile and slide that over to the right. 
This is actually a widget which shows you some news headlines. And if you find a story that you want to read, you tap on the story and you are taken to the full version. If you get it just right. Here it goes. So you have a CNN application and it actually doesn't take you to Opera Mobile, it takes you to the CNN application which is quite nice and you can go between world news and um, top stories and that sort of thing. So a useful application for keeping up with what's going on in the news. Now over here, here's another widget. Slide it over to the right. This is the calendar widget but it doesn't give us much information. It simply links us to the touch calendar which is Samsung's skinned uh, calendar, which is actually quite nice. It works kind of like it does on TouchFlow 3D on the newer devices, or even like the iPhone's um, calendar where you tap on a day and it shows you the appointment that you have there. But there's no widget for next appointment, which is a really big omission on the part of Samsung. Going down, we have some streaming TV widgets. Here's an analog clock that I added, which really doesn't do very much except show you the time. We're going to come back to this one that says widgets. We have a Google widget, which is always handy. It'll allow you to open up Google Maps, link to Gmail, or search Google right from your screen. So here's the on-screen keyboard. We're going to talk more about the on-screen keyboard later, but you can search for, you know, um, you know, Samsung. And you click on the search button, and Opera Mobile opens and does a Google search for you but you get the point. Exit. And then we have a standard clock, which is always good to know what time it is, so you're not late. And here's the, here's the place you go if you want to add new widgets. And I'm going to close this so that we get a full screen view. So there are a lot of widgets that have been added. I haven't found many that are too useful. Most of them are tip calculators or simple things like that. I'd like to have a Twitter widget perhaps, or maybe a full Facebook widget where I could update my Facebook status. There's a lot of possibilities here, but let's go through some of the widgets that you can have. So if we go to top recommended, it's a little bit slow. Right now I'm over 3G, actually 3G plus, so it should be fast, but it's not. Let me move this over a little bit. Okay, so here we are, and we have AccuWeather.com. I already have that. Dig, I don't have that. Quit smoking, unit converter. If we tap over to the right, we'll get the next list of widgets. Calculator, tactile calculator. So a lot of calculators, as you can see. These are the top recommended, and they're all calculators. I'm surprised there aren't some better quality things here. Tip calculator, word, world clock. Baby countdown, if you're expecting. Um, so let me go back to an actual good widget, and I'll show you what it's like to download one. So we'll go to um, most downloaded. And it's refreshing. Again, this widget interface is kind of slow, kind of clunky. I wish it was a dedicated program. So let's find something that's actually somewhat useful in here. Okay, we'll just choose the unit converter just for the sake of demonstrating. So you tap on unit converter, then you're taken to Opera Mobile, which is a step that I think they should eliminate. So you download the widget directly. But from here, it's pretty easy, actually. You just double tap, zoom in, shows you that 77 people have downloaded this, so it must not be too popular. And then you click download, and it actually downloads pretty fast and installs pretty much instantly. So there's not much waiting after this point. And here it says, success install widget, which really doesn't make sense, but that sentence. But it means that if we go back to our widgets over here, we will see the converter here at the bottom. So here's the widget that we have added, added within a few moments, although the, the whole process of finding the widget is kind of cumbersome. So we can, you know, type in a certain length and get a conversion from centimeters to, you know, inches. So overall, the widget interface on the Samsung Omnia 2 is much improved from where it was on the original Omnia, especially in terms of widget selection. Um, the whole process of getting widgets is a little bit cumbersome. I wish it was easier. And I also wish that they could have a widget for next appointment. That's really critically important if you're a business user and you want to be able to see at a quick glance what your next appointment will be. Also, it would be cool to have the ability to take a website URL and just place a screen full of quick links um, that would be quite cool. 
One more suggestion, I'd like to have a widget where I could put a picture of somebody and be able to click on their name and have it dial them directly or link to text message. So that's pretty much it. We'll be back soon with a more full tour of the whole software situation on the Samsung Omnia 2. Samsung has done so much to change the interface on the, uh, on the Omnia 2. You're going to forget that it's Windows Mobile for a lot of the time. We'll be back soon with more.